There's a street on the Hamilton Mountain that travels east-west. It is located halfway between Concession Street and Fennel Avenue, and therefore it is a pretty decent alternative route to take when you don't want to cycle on those two roads. It doesn't have any cycling infrastructure on it, except for some sharrows, but it does score a passing grade. The street in question is Queensdale Avenue. Let's get cycling. We begin cycling down Mountain Brow Boulevard and turning left on to Upper Ottawa Street. Now I'm showing this portion of my route to get to Queensdale to show you how you might approach it. And also to show you that Upper Ottawa is just void of traffic this far north. We have four lanes across for cars and no cycling infrastructure. Upper Ottawa doesn't connect to the link. And this is just a street that really could benefit from having cycling infrastructure. Yes, it gets busier the further south you go, but it's not as busy as Stone Church Road, and Stone Church Road is fine with two lanes and a middle lane that is a two-way left turning lane in the middle. But anyways, that's beside the point. Let's talk about Queensdale Avenue. So, as you can see, it's, it's a pretty wide street, and it's a good alternative to Fennel, or even concession. Concession can kind of get a little bit busy. Some people don't like cycling down it. There's a lot of businesses on concession though. But uh, yeah, if you don't want to cycle on Fennel, you can always cycle on Brucedale. There's a lot of stop signs on Brucedale. Or you could cycle on Queensdale. There is less controlled intersections. There is 17 controlled intersections as opposed to Brucedale's 22. And Brucedale had 19 stop signs. Queensdale only has 10. So half as many stop signs, there's more traffic lights. And we'll get to some of the issues with two of the traffic lights in just a moment. But uh, yeah, as you can see, it's a fairly wide road. It's about four lanes across. There's parking on both sides of the road. I don't know why we really need parking on both sides of the road. We could definitely get rid of one lane just so that we could have two cycle lanes on uh, either side of the road. And we have plenty of space, but uh, because there is random parking on the left side and the right side, pretty much the entire length of this avenue, it scores as a narrow street for most of it. So the score that it receives is a 62. That is definitely better than Brucedale's 54. Brucedale really suffered from all those stop signs. And uh, yeah. As you can see here, we have traffic lights here. There's definitely on Brucedale major intersections that don't have traffic lights. And that can be a downfall because there's a lot of traffic that you might have to cross and you're you're waiting and you're waiting and it would really benefit from having a traffic light there but uh yeah again there is two intersections towards the end of this that i really don't like and uh we'll, we'll get to them when we do because ugh, they need improvements but yeah as you can see this is pretty much just residential you're halfway between Fennel and Concession, so if you wanted to go to any businesses on Fennel or Concession, they're a fair ways away from each other, um, probably about half a kilometer in either direction, whereas with Brucedale, you're a lot closer to Fennel. I think you're only like 300 meters away from Fennel somewhere around that range. But uh, yeah, this is all just kind of residential. It's nice, it's cozy uh, for most of this route. It's very manageable. I think a lot of people would find it comfortable. There is Sharrows on this route and they are coming up fairly soon after we pass Upper Sherman. The Sharrows begin. Now, a lot of people do not like Sharrows. I am slightly biased against Sharrows myself. I tried not to be because of an incident that had happened with Sharrows, but uh, 
enough people had told me that they didn't like Shero, so now Shero Streets do not really get a bonus. They kind of do get a bonus. They get a very small visibility booster bonus, which I think equates, if I can find it, do do do. It equates to 0.4% boost for this route. So it's not huge. It is something on the road that drivers might be able to notice. But as you can see here, the Sharrows begin and they're off to the side. Now, the strange thing about Sharrows is you can either have a Sharrow in the middle of a lane or off to the side. And if it's off to the side, that usually means there's enough space for a bicycle lane to fit there, but they don't put a bicycle lane in. So this is something I think the city should definitely do. All these sharrows should be turned into bicycle lanes, at least for a good portion of it. There's some sections of sharrow where it's a little bit more narrow. It would be slightly more difficult to fit in a bicycle lane, but definitely here you can see the cars have no problem driving beside me. And uh, I, I should point out that this is a 40 kilometer an hour road. I'm doing about 32 kilometers an hour. And those cars are just way gone. Like, they're gone. Cars like to, like, they, they see the straightaway and they just go. And uh, that is very unfortunate. I think we need better painted intersections when we do have controlled intersections. Some of them aren't as noticeable. Like, this one up ahead is very noticeable. We have the paint for the crosswalk. Cars will stop. And yeah, it's not too bad, but there is other sections where the paint just isn't as noticeable. And to help bring that to light, every time there is a controlled intersection, that is when the street names have been coming up. And if you didn't notice a crosswalk, then there is a good chance that drivers might miss that it is a controlled intersection and they could blast right through it and uh yeah and uh, just up ahead as we are approaching upper wentworth here's an example of the sharrow in the middle of the lane and that means there's not enough space for a, a bicycle lane to be put into place and so that's why it's in the center and then once we get to the other side of upper wentworth it's back to the right but then it kind of goes in the middle and i stick to the sharrows i figure if anyone is going to, like, if any driver is going to confront me about kind of driving in the middle of the road, I am just going to tell them I'm just following the sharrows. And the reason why the sharrows here are in the middle of the road is because there is parking to the right now. And this is kind of the section where you may or may not be able to fit in a bicycle lane here. The sharrows are quite far away out from the parking that is there, but... You do need some space so that you don't get doored if someone opens up a door. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's just, it's just a little bit too close to the yellow line to really say to put a, a bicycle lane in there. But again, why do we need parking on the road? Oh, here's an example of arrows not being where there was a controlled intersection, and that's because there is a park connection. And there's going to be another one up ahead where there's a park connection, and it's... Oh no, it's, I think that next one is a controlled uh, intersection. Uh, but yeah, as I said, like all these driveways have plenty of space for multiple cars. You don't need to have parking on both sides of the street. Like all these houses have driveways. None of them have garages. And so the driveways go, well, some of them have drive, uh, garages, but... If they don't have a garage, then they at least have a spot for two or three cars. And so, get rid of the parking. I know a lot of people, the neighbors in this neighborhood, would be like, No, I need that uh, curbside parking. What if I have guests over? Uh, there's other streets you could park on. This is kind of a major route that cyclists might take. This would be good as a bicycle boulevard. Probably even better than Brucedale. But here is one of my biggest concerns. Now, most of the time when I approach a traffic light in one of these videos, I fast forward. I'm not going to fast forward here. And that is because whenever I have driven, uh, rode my bike down Queensdale and I approach this intersection, there is uh, a weight sensor for cars, but there's not a weight sensor for bicycles. 
And so you kind of wait here until a car approaches you from behind. I am lucky in this case, a car does approach me from behind. Uh, I move forward a little bit to give them a little bit of space so that they might get on the sensor. And the thing is, if there wasn't a car behind me, the car that will be approaching from the opposite direction, uh, if they trigger the light, the, the weight for a vehicle, they will get an advanced green and I will keep getting a red light. I was lucky in this case, there was actually two cars behind me. One of them did move up and touch that weighted sensor. And so that wasn't an issue. And so, yeah, even, even with that car, hitting that sensor and I'm just going to quickly turn around so you can kind of see, yeah, that's the only reason why I was able to do this. If that car wasn't there and the white SUV that was coming in the opposite direction, they would have got an advanced green and I would have had a red light. And that is what has happened to me on multiple occasions. So I was quite lucky this time around and up ahead, I believe it's the next lit intersection. Uh, I believe, that one has been improved because there was no cars behind me and it did eventually turn green for me. But last year when I had ridden on Queensdale, uh, I had the exact same problem. So it has been improved there. You can see that uh, you will see it once we approach, but uh, some improvements are being made there. They're repainting that area as well. Here's a connection through a park. And what I would actually say is, if you were trying to get to the Ketty Axis Trail, take Skyland Drive here. Turn right, take Skyland Drive, or you could take the next controlled intersection, turn right there, go to Inverness, and getting to uh, the Ketty Axis Trail is easier from Inverness than it is from Queensdale. But uh, just for the purpose of this video, I will show you how to get to the Ketty Axis Trail. There's two other points after you cross Upper James where you could get onto the Ketty Axis Trail. One of them is a little bit harder to explain. You have to cut through a park that you can't tell is a park just by driving by. You really have to be looking and seeing that it's not a driveway for a house. It's an access to a park. So that will be coming up in just a moment. And the other one is to meet it at the current trailhead where uh, Claremont Access connects to West 5th. So yeah, here we are at Upper James. As you can see, they're, at the time I filmed this, this was very late April. Uh, it looks like they're getting ready to paint. And I didn't have to, well, I did have to wait quite a while. As you can see, it's fast forwarding for quite a while, but no cars were behind me and the light did change and there was no pedestrians wanting the cross so no one pressed a button so something there was improved recently and i'm very happy about that so yeah here we are actually on queensdale avenue east because we are now or sorry we're on west and uh because we are now west of upper james and make sure you turn left here i accidentally turn right turning right will bring you back to Upper James and you don't really want to be on Upper James at all. It is possible to get to Southam Park and connect to the Ketty Access Trail from Inverness, but you would have to turn onto Duff here at the very end of the street is Duff and you would have to turn left onto Upper James and turn left right away onto the next street, which is Inverness. So yeah, don't take that route. I made the mistake. You want to turn left once you get to the end of Queensdale. So here I am just traveling back down and this is West 2nd. West 2nd is a pretty decent street. It will connect to Brucedale as well. It connects to Brantdale. It crosses Fennel Avenue at a, it's, it's a controlled intersection. It stop signs as far as I remember for traveling North South. And there is a uh, pedestrian activated light that will turn a green light red for fennel drivers. So here we are on Brantdale. If you want, you could go straight through Brantdale at the lights. Although I do believe there is a, oh wait, 
T. Melville Bailey Park. That's the uh, connection that you could get to Inverness from there. But yeah, if you were to go to the lights going straight through, last time I checked, my bike didn't trigger the weight sensor. And it's a pretty heavy bike, and I'm a pretty heavy guy. So it's always easier to turn right here. And this is not ideal to connect to the Keddie Access Trail, but it is an option. So if you did not want to accidentally go down James Mountain Road, which is it's fairly steep, you can connect to the Keddie Access Trail from here. And so what you do is after there's this little island, you get into the painted median, and then you can make a left-hand turn onto this um, U-turn section that has been closed off. You have to be very careful. There's cars rushing by on your right, cars rushing up on your left, but you can turn to this kind of staging area. It used to be kind of a U-turn area, and you can kind of wait for an opening. It's kind of hard to see vehicles because there is trees in the way, and it would be nice if there was a curb cut out here to be able to do that or put down some asphalt uh, in the meantime uh, until the Kitty Axis gets brought down all the way to Fennel. Uh, but yeah, here we are on the Kitty Axis Trail. And hopefully you found this video informative. It is a great alternative route to Fennel. And yeah, one day hopefully Fennel will become biking friendly. That's it for now. Take care and stay safe. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters who are helping to make improvements to this channel.